Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. We are so excited to share the latest Power BI announcements here at Built. I'm Christian Wade, Group Product Manager for Professional Business Intelligence in Power BI and Fabric. We have Zoe Douglas with us today. Zoe, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Christian. Yeah, so my name is Zoe Douglas, and I am a product manager working on professional tooling for semantic data models. Thank you. And we'll be joined shortly by Rui Romano. So here's the agenda. It's packed full of awesome demos on fabric, developer experiences, and a vision demo that you won't believe. So let's get stuck in. The cat is well and truly out of the bag. We've been working on Fabric for some time now, and we couldn't be more excited to share the good news with our community. Fabric will truly transform how analytics projects are delivered. Because customers today are often locked into proprietary vendor formats, they have to spend inordinate amounts of time and money integrating data across vendor products, and this complexity causes data fragmentation, which is poisonous to organizations seeking to embrace a data culture. However, there's a silver lining. It's clear that analytics projects have consistent patterns. They invariably require data integration, data engineering, data warehousing, business intelligence, etc. Now, Microsoft has had leading products in each of these areas for a long time, but with Fabric, we are providing the market with the first truly unified analytics system based on one copy of data and a unified security model. We're taking a bold bet on Delta Lake and Parquet as an open standard format. Think about what this means for customers. In addition to avoiding vendor lock-in, one copy of data shared across each of the Fabric analytical engines means customers will dramatically reduce data silos and data integration costs. And of course, this is done with deep integration with Microsoft Office, Teams, and delightful AI co-pilot experiences. You won't believe some of the demos you're about to see. Now let's talk about Direct Lake storage mode for Power BI datasets in Fabric. Direct Lake, remember the name. Power BI datasets have had direct query and import storage modes for a very long time. Users interact with visuals in Power BI reports and they submit DAX queries to the Power BI dataset. Direct query avoids having to copy data, but typically suffers performance degradation by having to submit federated SQL queries to other database systems that are just not as efficient for BI style queries. Import mode, on the other hand, delivers blazing fast performance because queries are answered from our columnar data store that is highly optimized for BI queries. But of course, the data has to be copied during refresh, introducing management overhead. Enter direct lake mode. By querying data directly from the lake, Power BI datasets enjoy blazing fast query performance on a par with import mode without having to copy a single row of data. Now I know what you're thinking, how on earth is this physically possible? It literally sounds too good to be true. Well, it just so happens that Parquet is also a columnar storage format that works perfectly with our engine. So let me make this clear. Power BI is moving to Delta Lake and Parquet as its native storage format. This changes everything. Let's run a direct lake demo. I'll start off in my fabric lake house or warehouse. Here you can see the parquet files in the lake. I simply click on the new dataset button, select the tables I'm interested in, and I immediately land in the recently announced Power BI dataset web modeling experience. I didn't even have to leave the browser. I can create relationships and measures. And here's the kicker. I can click on the new report button and create a beautiful Power BI report directly from the lake. Notice I didn't have to perform a refresh. There's almost 4 billion rows of data in this table and I get instant response times. So to summarize, we've unlocked massive data with blazing fast performance, and we didn't have to copy a single row of data. We didn't have to manage ETL jobs into the data warehouse. We didn't have to manage data loads into the Power BI dataset. Users can create beautiful Power BI reports in seconds without any data duplication. Now let's switch gears and talk about developer experiences in Power BI. Developer mode enables source control and CI-CD integration for Power BI desktop authored datasets and reports. We're providing native integration with Git from the Power BI service that can be optionally integrated with Power BI deployment pipelines. And as you'll see in the demo, instead of saving to a PBIX file, you simply save to a Power BI project, which places the artifact metadata on the file system so you can check into source control. 
So without further ado, let's invite Rui to join us from Portugal for an amazing demo. Rui, over to you. Hi, my name is Rui, and I'm a product manager on the Power BI team, focusing on developer experiences. And I'm really excited to show you the new developer experiences we have for Power BI. Let me show you. Now, with Power BI Desktop, you not only have the option to save your work as a single PBIX file, but you can also save it as a Power BI project. A new save option that will make Desktop save your development into a folder, finally unblocking source control and collaboration using Power BI Desktop. Let me show you. From an open Power BI report, you can now go to File, Save As and select the Power BI Project Save As type. And Desktop from now on will save all your development into a folder. This is a folder with a Power BI project in it. It contains one folder for the dataset and one folder for the report. So if I go back to Desktop and I create a new measure, Desktop will save the new measure in the model definition within the dataset folder. And I can use Tablet Editor the open source community tool to open the model definition file and view the measure created on desktop. Now let's do the opposite. Let's create something in Tablet Editor and see it reflected in desktop. Let's duplicate the product table and save. If I go back to desktop, I don't see that new table because desktop it's not aware from outside changes. So I need to close desktop and reopen the Power BI project file. And I'll be able to see the new table created in Tableau Editor. But notice something interesting. If I go to the data view, all my tables have data. But if I click on that new table, that new table doesn't have data. Why? Because Tableau Editor didn't refresh any data, just created a new table definition. But notice also something. So Power BI Desktop, because it's working in a Power BI project, detected that I have some tables that have incomplete or no data and, and is asking me to refresh now. And if I click refresh, it's also smart enough to only refresh that single new table that I created from Tableau Editor. And now that Power BI Desktop can work on a folder, I can initialize a Git repo and enable version control and collaboration with other developers. And I can do that using Visual Studio Code. From the Power BI project folder, I can open Visual Studio Code and initialize a new Git repo. And from now on, because I have a Git enabled folder, I can track and version control any change I make in desktop. For example, if I change a measure, I can easily track that change in Git. And Visual Studio Code will show me that I have a file diff in my model BIM file. Now to enable collaboration, I need to use uh, Azure DevOps. So I can go to Azure DevOps and I can create a new repo. Let's call it the mode. And I need to configure this remote Git repo URL back in Visual Studio Code. and publish my branch. And Visual Studio Code will take care of syncing my local development into Azure DevOps. And now I can enable collaboration and have multiple developers working on the same Power BI project using Power BI Desktop. They only need to be connected to the same Azure DevOps repo. But we didn't stop here. We will also enable you to sync a Git repo to a workspace in the service. And for that, you need to go to the workspace settings where we'll, you will find an option called Git integration that will allow you to connect the workspace to an Azure DevOps Git repo. So let's select the Azure DevOps organization and the projects, the repo and branch we were working and click on connect and sync. And just like that, we just enabled a two-way synchronization between the workspace and a Git repo in Azure DevOps. It will start by synchronizing the content from Git into the workspace, creating a report and a dataset artifact, 
I must refresh the dataset, because in Git, there is no data, only metadata and code, and I can also make changes in the workspace and synchronize those changes into Git. Let's make a small edit in the sales report and change the background color of this card into red and save. And also, let's create a new report and create a very simple report and save it to the workspace. And I want you to notice two things. The first one is this indication in the toolbar in the source control, where I can click and I can see changes that are from the workspace into Git. And I can see that they have a modification in the sales report and I have a new report called report from service. I can click on both changes. I can undo the changes if I want, but I'm not going to do that. I will commit and I will provide a message. And let's hit commit. And the service is going to synchronize both changes into Git. And you can also notice in the status bar, I can, I can see that my workspace is connected to the main branch. I can see the last time it synced. And I also have a link that will take me to the commit. So where I can click, and this will take me into Azure DevOps, and it will tell me exactly what have changed. Now, let's go back to my local machine. If I go back to my local folder, I can only see the sales data set and the sales report. I don't have the report that was created in the service because this is still in Git. But I can open Visual Studio Code and I can do a Git pull. And Visual Studio Code will sync the content from Git into my local machine. And if I go back to the folder, I can see that I have my new report created from the service. And of course, I can open this back in desktop. And now we'll be able to see the change that I did in the service, the switch of the background color. But I can also open the report directly by navigating to the report folder and opening the definition file. And Power BI Desktop will open the service created report for local authoring, but this time connected to the local dataset that will also be in full edit mode, where I can view and edit measures, transform data, or even go to the data view to explore the dataset data. And this is it, the new Power BI project save option that together with Git integration will unblock collaboration, source control, and automatic deployment into your Power BI projects. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat in store for you. Zoe is going to show us real demos of features that are coming soon. We want to give you a sneak peek into the future. So Zoe, why don't you show us what we've done lately for semantic model authoring? Sure. So one of the things we've been doing recently is we've been making some changes to the model view. So in the model view, you have your familiar view of all the tables in the mm -hmm. diagram, and you have them listed over here in the data pane. Mm -hmm. But now we're introducing this new model pivot. And this gives you full view of all the semantic objects in your model. So here I can see my roles, I can see all the relationships, uh, perspectives, and all the measures, even if they're all in different tables. And Christian, I know you're gonna be excited about this one, but we also can now have calculation wow. groups listed. And not what a relief. And wow. not only can you see these calculation groups, but we can actually come in and now for the first time in desktop actually see the calculation items. Mm -hmm. And if I click on it, I can actually edit it here right in desktop. So I can actually edit and create calc groups right in desktop. Well, I am blown away, Zoe, because this model view is kind of like the field list that we know for the report view, but this is like the field list for the model view where I can see all of the semantic model objects in one place, including even the calculation groups and calculation items, because you know, calculation group authoring happens to be one of the highest voted items on ideas.powerbr.com. And so it is just uh, so gratifying to see that we can create them here. They're so useful for these large models with complex calculations. Now, Zoe, uh, I do have a question mm -hmm. for you about 
complex calculations. You know, the formula bar, occasionally, I have to say, if you don't mind me saying, occasionally I feel a little bit constrained when I'm authoring these uh, really complex calculations with lots of interdependencies between measures. Is there anything that we're doing soon to address that? Yeah, so I'm glad you asked, Christian, because there is. You may have noticed that there is a fourth view there available in desktop and that is introducing the DAX query view. So here I can write any DAX query on this model mm -hmm. and run it right here in desktop. So here I have one that is showing me the profit margin by mm -hmm. fiscal year. I'm gonna hit run wow. and I can see that run right here. And this measure here, I can actually click on here, hover, and I can see the DAX expression right here in wow. context in the DAX query. This is amazing. This is something that I've always wanted from the formula bar because, you know, when you're working on a measure and it references another measure, uh, it's it's quite distracting to have to, to context switch to click on the other manage, measure to see the definition. But this does raise another question because this measure is referring to the measure definition for this one's referring to two other measures. Yeah. And naturally, I want to see the definitions for all of them in one place. Does this address that scenario at all? Yes, it does. So if I click on this one, you'll see mm -hmm. this little light bulb show mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Here, I can click on this and I can say I can define this measure mm -hmm. or I can define this measure and expand references. Wow. So now I can see the multiple DAX expressions listed here. Uh -huh. I can see the profit margin and I can see all the measures down to the data columns uh -huh. that is used to generate that measure. That's and amazing. Now, Christian, uh, you can not only just see it here, but you can also make changes. You can make changes right here? I can make I don't believe it. I can I do two it. measures at once, I'll show you. So here I'm going to multiply our costs by two, and maybe we'll sell everything at triple the price. Of course. Right? <laughs> just to make up for those costs. <laughs> and now I'm gonna run this, and I can see what impact that would have on our profit margin, which it goes up to 40%. Okay. Now these changes are still only limited to the single DAX query. If I go back to my visuals, we still see the old value of 11%. Mm -hmm. But this DAX query view is pretty smart and knows I have these measures in my model. So it's giving me this inline prompt to actually save it back. So I can quickly save the changes I've made to this measure mm -hmm. back to my model with just these two clicks still in context of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And if I go back to my report view, I can see wow. it actually updated with those that, major changes. It's like seamless integration. You can make edits to your DAX and when you're comfortable with the edits and you validated the numbers, you just save it straight back to the model. Uh, this is such a productivity boost, but you know, it does beg another question, Zoe, because here I can see these four uh, measure definitions, but you know, some of these models, they may have, you know, hundreds or even a thousand measures. And um, why not just see all of them so that I can do, for example, global find and replace? Is there anything that we can do for that scenario? Absolutely, Christian. So we can actually come over here into the data pane. I can mm -hmm. right click and use this quick queries, mm -hmm. which will define all no, the measures in the model. I don't believe it. So now here I can see all these measures that I have in my model. Uh -huh. I can do find, I can do replace, and I can also do other text editor things here, like I can zoom in uh -huh. and zoom out. Um, and not only did I give you all of the measure definitions, so you can go in, as you, as you saw before, edit any of them and save them back to the model, uh -huh. but I also gave you a query with them. So you can actually even just run this and see all your measures and then tailor this to what you need. You can add a group by column, remove measures, whatever you need to do, it's already done and ready for you. I'm amazed. So another thing those quick queries can do mm -hmm. is I can now come over to a new page and I can actually define a single measure. So let's go ahead and take a look at this discount and I can say, just show me for this measure alone and I can run it. And not only that, but now I have the summarize columns here. I can go ahead and I can add wow. a group by column. Full IntelliSense. Full everything. IntelliSense. And I can run this right here and see that come back. Now, it's not only for measures. I can also come down to any of my data tables. Like here's my customer. Yeah. I can right click and I have a quick query here also to okay. give me the top 100 rows, which would be really helpful for those of you in direct query scenarios where you don't have that data view. Yeah. And then you can also get down to an individual column. So if I wanted to see what countries do we have in this model, I have a quick query for that. 
and we can come in and do distinct values. So let me go ahead and run this. And now you wow. can see them all generated I for you. I am amazed. I didn't even realize there were so many different ways to generate these DAX queries because a lot of the DAX queries are actually generated by the report visuals, right? And occasionally you might even want to intercept the DAX queries generated by the report visuals, for example, for debugging purposes. Is there anything that we can do to address that scenario? Absolutely. So <laughs> as you know, our more advanced users will go to the performance analyzer and get mm -hmm. the copy, the query yes. out of there. But yes. now we've made just as easy as the quick queries. You can right click any visual, go to inspect visual, and now that DAX query is over in the DAX query view and ran. So you can go ahead and take whatever steps you need to take now. Not only will it do it on, because it's so tightly integrated in desktop, mm -hmm. not only will it do the visual in this state, but I can actually filter it. Yep. And then do the inspect visual. And it brings the filter? And it brings the filter. So up no here, way. you can see that it brings that filter with it and you see how it is applied to the visual. And finally, we can also get down to an individual data point and inspect just that data point to see the query behind it. You've thought of everything. You've <laughs> literally thought of everything. I am so happy. I mean, this is such a productivity booster, Zoe. I, I honestly can't believe it. Next, you're going to tell me that the, the system's going to write the DAX for me. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that, Christian, because I actually didn't write that first query either. I had Copilot and Power BI. No, I don't, Do I don't believe it. Do you want me to show you? Yes. All right, so here we can say, show me profit margin percent by fiscal year. Oops. And it would generate no. the query for oh, me. My goodness, this is amazing. This will change everything. So not only that, but it's conversational. So as soon as I've written that one, it's going to actually suggest another prompt and another query because I already did it by year, maybe it thinks, well, maybe I want to see it by quarter next. And it will do that for me. It's conversational. It's kind of eager to have a conversation with you. And it's taken your instructions that were specified in English and it translated them effectively to DAX. Amazing, amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, um, I, I know some individuals who you would have thought DAX is their native language, actually. And then um, others like us, we're comfortable uh, uh, providing instructions in English and having the system generate the DAX for us. But some other individuals, they may not have English as their first language. What do they have to do? Do they need to use some kind of an online translator to use this tool? No, they can actually just speak to it in whatever language they're comfortable with. Okay, so here I have a prompt in German. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it took that prompt no problem and wrote a query based off of what I had in German here. And then not only, Christian, will it um, do the first query, but now it's going to continually prompt. I can't believe it. In German. And because it saw that I was speaking to it in German, it thought maybe I was actually interested in only the customers <laughs> in Germany. So that is its next step. It was going to, and it's going to continue to do that. It's going to continue to provide prompts, narrowing in now into Berlin. Wow, so it's quite chatty and it's quite keen to have a conversation with you and it's detected that uh, it believes your, your native language is German. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna have a conversation with you in German. I mean, this is just amazing. Like I, n I never saw this coming. This will, this will transform the way we work, right? Now, um, something about these uh, AI co-pilots that, that uh, with regard to the Microsoft products, they are now becoming ubiquitous across Microsoft products. So is there anywhere else in Power BI that I can use this AI co-pilot experience? Yeah, so let me show you a report that I had published earlier. It's beautiful. Here we have also a co-pilot. Mm -hmm. And if I click on this, it's gonna open up a co-pilot pane. Mm -hmm. And now first it's going to actually suggest some prompts based off wow. of the data it already wow. sees. Uh, but I can still just put in whatever prompt I want. So here I'm gonna go ask it to tell me about the sales performance in Australia, right? So that's- No way. Right, and immediately it's given me a summary of the sales performance. This is amazing. You can have a conversation with the report. Mm -hmm. Ask it um, how to increase sales, for example. Sure, so we just go in here and we can ask it how it's going to increase the sales further. And Unbelievable. Here we go. And it, just like that, it came up with a little business plan. It's given you a customer demographic, which countries to target in your marketing promotion. This is literally amazing, Zoe. Like, what else can you do with this? 
So we can also, so I don't have any slicers on this report. Well, I have some slicers, but none for country. So I can actually ask Copilot to filter the report to Australia, right? So we can take a further look. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to ask my permission to apply the filter. Okay. And it's going to do that. So the way it did it is it actually used the filter pane. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't have a slicer? Yeah, it didn't have a slicer. So yeah. it actually used the filter pane and filtered the report to Australia. This is really helpful, right? Because some users may not even know there is a filter pane. And even those that do are going to have to go and find Australia in the list of values. This is just so smooth, so so easy. Exactly. You know, And especially for users who may have not seen this particular report. I mean, some of these reports are visually stunning. Someone has obviously put their heart and soul into authoring these beautiful reports. But sometimes they can be a little bit overwhelming because there's so much going on in them. There's so much information packed into these reports. So sometimes it's as though I could really use some kind of a TL LDR summary of the report. Do you think Copilot could help me with that? Yeah, it absolutely can. Uh, but we actually have another Copilot that actually may be better suited for that task. Okay. So here we have a visual Copilot that I can really? keep on the report even after. So the pain will just be for me, but here I can actually now use a prompt um, that my report consumers can use. So let's go ahead and change this one mm -hmm. to, uh, let's say, give me, um, let's see to give me a 20 word summary of key takeaways and let's use some emojis this time just to okay. make it a little bit more fun. And just wow. like that, we have our summary built in. This is amazing. So this summary um, is going to change uh, when uh, new data comes through this system. Yeah. What, what about cross filtering? Does yeah. that work too? Absolutely. Amazing. So it's a dynamic uh, summary for uh, users who are uh, viewing this report for the first time, they can get a, 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 a head start on what the report is about. This is exactly. absolutely amazing. It's such a great productivity tool, uh, Zoe. This will really change the way that we uh, author models and we, we interact with reports, um, just changes everything. So thank you so much. You're welcome, Christian. And also, I would like to note that this is not the only place we have Copilot. It's not? In Power BI and Fabric. I think there's another session that's going to get into a few more of them as well. Oh, you mean Patrick Baumgartner's session? Yes, yes. Okay. So be sure to so, check out that one as well. Okay, check that one out too. Thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you. Lastly, let's summarize the important Power BI announcements. Direct Lake datasets in Fabric is in public preview. Try them out today. Power BI Desktop Developer Mode Public Preview is coming to a release near you very soon. It's so close, I can almost touch it. Azure Analysis Services to Fabric Automated Migration is generally available. Not only migration to Power BI Premium, but now you can take your semantic models from Azure Analysis Services all the way to Fabric with just a few clicks and align with the Microsoft BI product roadmap. Data modeling in the Power BI service is in public preview. Like you saw me create the Direct Lake dataset in the web modeling experience, you can do so for other datasets too. The optimized ribbon for Power BI Desktop is generally available. Unlock big data with optimized report authoring experiences. Paginated report drill through is in public preview. This is a commonly used feature for SQL Server reporting services. So removes a barrier when migrating from on-premises to Fabric. The MongoDB connector for Power BI, one of the most requested connectors on ideas.powerbi.com, is now in public preview. Hybrid tables is generally available. Unlock massive data for interactive analysis with real-time streaming capabilities. And lastly, Azure Log Analytics integration for fine-grained logging and auditing of Power BI dataset engine events is now generally available. So, with that, thank you all so much for attending Build. This one was truly epic. Thank you to Zoe, thank you to Rui, and see you all next time.